Okay, so I'm replacing this fuse for the second time in the Schumacher battery maintainer, um, 1.5 amp. So I'm using this to keep my battery in my tractor um, topped off, especially during the winter when it's so cold here in Southern Colorado. So uh, blew a fuse about a year ago. I replaced it, worked fine since. And I thought a couple weeks ago, you know, I put such protectors on everything else, but I haven't put one on this. And so I bought this about two weeks ago and it's a yellow jacket plug-in GFI and surge protector. This is just an inline one. It's still out there in the tractor barn. Um, and uh, had a spike. It uh, shorted out one of my other things, tripped a couple breakers and went through that and blew this fuse. So I'm a little disappointed in this that it didn't uh, do its job surge protecting. It still blew this fuse. So we're gonna replace it again. I bought a different um, GFI protector that I know worked and it protected one of my other uh, um, battery tenders. Okay, so I have one of these exact battery tenders, the exact model, everything on my pickup on my diesel truck. And I had one of these in line with it. This was outside. This wasn't even protected by like, this one was in a tractor barn. This was in a tractor barn. Um, this is out in the elements and um, it did the job. So I bought another one today. This is exactly what it is. It's two feet, 12, ga uh, 12 gauge wire. Um, and it's a GFI. And it's a, it says somewhere else on here that it will, uh, is a surge protector as well. Well, this protected the one on my truck. I have one of these exact ones on my truck. This protected the one on my truck. This did not protect the one on my tractor. So I'm a little disappointed in this one, but so I just bought another one of these. I'll just use this one. I think this was 20 bucks. I thought I was saving a few bucks because this was going to be inside the tractor barn and out of the weather, out of the wind and everything. But this is, uh, an outdoor one. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this one in. This was 35 bucks, I think at my local ACE. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get this fuse changed again and get this thing back in service. And okay, just so you can see, I'll try to make this as least complicated as possible. We'll plug this in here and um, you can see none of the LEDs light up. So the next step is to unplug this. So this is not plugged in anymore. The circuit board is safe to work on. This is the fuse right here. And I don't have my binoculars. I mean, my magnifying glass, of course, but uh, it's a 250 volt fuse T one amp. So you can order these um, online. This is the one I replaced before. This is the exact replace. I found the exact replacement all the letters, everything, everything was exact on this fuse compared to the one that I pulled out of it, the original one, the manufacturer, original manufacturer one that, uh, opened. So you can see that maybe you can't see in the camera, but there's a leg on this side and there's a leg on this side over here that corresponds to these two legs right here. So this fuse right here actually jumps from there to there. So we're going to set this on the, uh, ohm or just the circuit test there. And we're going to put one on one side, one on the other, and you can see there's no connectivity. So that tells me the fuse is bad. So we're going to go ahead and unsolder this and pull it out and then we'll replace it. Okay. And I can hear you saying, Eric, that is way overkill soldering gun for what you're doing. And I agree, but this is the only one I have. So this is what we're going to use. So I just put a little hemostat on here, clipped it on. That'll give me something to pull on as I... So I'm going to oppose forces. I'm going to try to kind of pull this way with my hand with this, and I'm going to push with my thumb here. And I'm just going to hit this real gently at the highest setting. And I'm going to have to hit one and then the other to try to get them both to without melting my board, but just enough to melt the solder. Okay, that one moved a little bit. Okay, now it comes. Boom. So, let me find it over here. Now, maybe this will come out in the camera, maybe it won't, but there's the fuse. And here are the replacements. Huh, look how many I got. 
So, I mean, they're cheap. They're super cheap. I forget what this was. Maybe two or three, I, I don't know, less than five bucks, I think. Um, and there's the new one. So, and this is the exact one that I pulled out from the, the old one. Now we're just going to do a quick test now that we've pulled this out. And let's put this back on that setting right there. We're going to double check that we have, yes. Okay, now we're going to set it on each of these wires on the bad one. Ugh, it won't hold still. Hold still. Okay, there's no connectivity there. The, there should be connectivity in a fuse, right? And you can hear it beeping there. So that's a good one. That tells us it's good. It tells us the fuse is bad. Now there could be other things wrong with the circuit board. This is a risk um, I'm taking, obviously. Uh, repairing my own circuit board. But uh, if this was a fuse that you would pop in, you would just pop one out, pop a new one in, just like you do in your vehicle or anything else. So that's all I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to cut these legs down to about that length as well. And then we'll, about that length, sorry. And then we'll go ahead and get this one soldered in. Okay. Orientation doesn't matter. So there's the holes. Just going to kind of drop this in right here where each leg goes into a hole. There we go. Now, hold that with my thumb. And we're gonna have to alternate back and forth because it won't go all the way through because one leg will be, one soldered joint will be hard and the other will be soft, right? So we'll have to kind of alternate and work it back and forth. We might even have to add a little bit of solder here and there. So we'll get that leg in a little bit, then we'll work this leg in. Okay. Now it popped all the way through. You can see it's seated, but it's real loose. So I'm going to have to get rid of this glob of solder here. Maybe what we'll do is just try to work it back this direction. We're going to steal a little bit from there if we can. Drop it on this leg. Okay, now that should do it. It's seated. Let's just test it to make sure. Back on that setting right there. Now we have connectivity. Okay, let's just test it out now and see if it's gonna work. This is our battery end of courses that are juicy end. We're gonna plug this into the outlet and we'll look right there. Oh, they all light up. Now, the, tr the thing about this is um, these, this probably won't give me 12 volts because um, it does, if it won't sense a battery, it won't put voltage through it. Okay, so I think that's how they work anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and put it back together, hook it up to the battery and see if it uh, works. Okay, now to get this back in, we're going to put this in the lighted side first. So it's unplugged. And we're going to drop the board in right here. And you can see those two little slots right there and right there. That's what the board sits in. Those lights go right in those little tiny slots right there. They have to correspond with that. So now the lights line up with those holes. The board sits in there. We're going to go ahead and just run these carefully right here. There's one. Here's the other. Now, um, this also has slots here that'll engage the board. That light is sticking up. There we go. 
now it's seated. So you just gotta wanna make sure that right down here that the board is actually touching right there and touching right over there as well. And so one of those lights had caught and was bent up a little bit. So now it's seated correctly. Now I'll go ahead and close this one over this. And you can see that the legs of our fuse, our fuse is down there. You can see that the legs that are sticking up right there aren't in close to anything. So. This will take a little bit of a finagle just to make sure I engage the board with those little slots. Okay, that feels good. Now I'm just gonna hold it here. I'm gonna plug it in. We're just gonna look at the lights just to make sure they'll all line up. Yep. Okay, let's get the screws back in. One, two, three, four. All right, let's go test it out. Okay, so this is what I was using before. And um, when I came out, this the light was dead on this, and this was still allowing current to flow through. It hadn't tripped anything. So that's what made me want to go ahead and just replace this one. Now I might use it for something else that's uh, not as delicate. Fine, it's working. Stripping, resets, okay, fine. Um, but what we are gonna use is this one right here. And this is an outdoor one. And let's just plug it in. Okay, that's nice. Kind of tells you all the connections are made. So let's test and then we'll reset. And now it lights up here. So that tells you that current's going through it, which is nice. Okay, now Try to orient this so you can see it here. Okay, there it went through its little test right there. I'm just going to set that right there for a minute. So uh, it doesn't say anything because it's not plugged into anything. We're going to plug it into the tractor right over here. So this will come out. Connections really aren't dirty. So. Okay, it's plugged in. Now it's saying on, and it'll, as long as it's trickle charging and it's not top, completely topped off, it'll say on. Once it gets completely topped off, it'll turn, that right box will light up and it'll turn green. So, cool. Working again. Um, hopefully this unit right here will do a better job for me. And uh, yeah, 